Hello everyone. Welcome to Around the World. Today let's study China. Let's go. There are more people in China than in any other country in the world. If we could make a quick count of the world's people, we should find that one in five people are Chinese. They differ from people of the West. Their hair is straight and black, and their eyes are dark and rather narrow. During recent times, they have partly changed their style of dress, so that now it is a mixture of ancient Chinese and modern European. Few people ever learn to speak or write the Chinese language. The writing system has developed from a large number of picture words. It looks very difficult for people who only speak a language of 26 letters. It reads from top to bottom instead of left to right, and that is why the shop signs in Chinese streets hang downwards like banners. China has many large crowded cities, 12 of which have more than a million people. Beijing in the north is the capital of China and one of the oldest cities. In the inner part of Beijing are many great palaces and temples. Not far to the north of the city is the Great Wall of China, which was built to keep out the fierce Mongols. The largest city in China is Shanghai, which stands near the mouth of the Yangtze or Yangtze River. It is also a great seaport and was one of the first places where foreigners were able to trade with the Chinese. Tens of thousands of its people work in the docks and in cotton mills, flour mills, and tobacco and other factories. In the south, the chief city and seaport is Guangzhou, near the delta of the Sikiang or West River. It is linked by railway with Kowloon and has much trade by sea with Hong Kong. Only in recent years has it become possible through trains to travel from Beijing in the north to Guangzhou in the south. A bridge was built over the Yangtze River at Wuhan. The main highway for trade between west and east is still the Yangtze River. Outside the cities and towns is the China of crowded villages, with small farms occupied by families of peasants. Somewhere in each village is the burial ground. The main reason why they cling to their native village. Is that it is the place where their ancestors lived and died. Every Chinese family is united in this attachment to ancestors and home, and the younger members show great respect for their elders. It is difficult to see how a large family can make a living from its three to four acres of land. They can only succeed by working hard from dawn till dusk, and by using every square yard of space. The farmer has no machines to help him, and he and the family do all the work. To save space, narrow tracks rather than roads are left between the small fields. The tracks are much too narrow for taxis and vehicles, and a common means of transport in the south is the Chinaman's taxi. This is the wheelbarrow with a large wheel on which the driver can transport either goods or passengers. Among the people of southern China, rice is by far the most important food. Most of them can only afford to eat meat as a special treat, and they much enjoy pork or duck. Meal times, they lift their food to their mouths with two wooden sticks known as chopsticks. On the hill slopes, the farmer grow tea, the kind which is called China tea in English-speaking countries. In the north, where the weather is cooler and drier, the chief food crop is wheat. Some farmers grow cotton, some raise silkworms, especially in central China. The farmer also keeps poultry and sells the eggs when he can. Many Chinese people have left their crowded towns to find work in other lands. Some have settled in parts of Southeast Asia, such as Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. They may be working as laborers or coolies in foreign towns, or they may have become prosperous merchants or shopkeepers. Some have traveled much further away from their country to the west coast of North America, or even to Europe. Around the coasts and along the great rivers of China, large numbers of families spend their whole lives on the wooden sailing vessels known as junks. They earn a living by transporting goods from one port to another, or by fishing. In recent years, the Chinese have seen great changes to their country. The government has been carrying out various schemes to make China more prosperous. They are trying, for example, to make peasants work together in large groups so that the families can help one another. They have begun to build new railways and roadways, chiefly to bring the distant provinces in the west more closely in touch with Beijing. They believe, however, that China cannot make much progress without the help of industry. China has coal fields in several different provinces, but in the past the production was small, 
In five years, the Chinese miners have doubled their output of coal. China also has many deposits of iron ore. At present, the iron and steel factories are chiefly centered at Anshan in Manchinora. More and more steel is needed, and in five years, the Chinese steel workers have more than trebled their output. The manufacture of cheap cotton clothing has long been important in cities such as Shanghai and Guangzhou. Hong Kong, where 99 of every 100 people are Chinese, also has cotton mills as well as factories producing various kinds of cheap manufactured articles. Chinese factory workers are willing to work for comparatively low wages and the things that they manufacture can therefore be sold cheaply in other countries. In most industries, the Chinese have only just begun to use modern methods. Some industries have not existed in China before. And that's the end of today's video. Please leave a like, comment on the video and then subscribe so you can keep up to date with new videos. See you soon.